Okay, so we're going to start. So uh, what are we now? Whiteboard. Okay, so we're gonna go with the homework. Are there any immediate questions about the homework? Uh, so any volunteer to put the work on the board for number one? So you volunteered to put the homework on the board. Question number one, Helena, go ahead, number one. You can type it or write on the screen. All right, um, so for number one, let me just, how exactly do I, I don't think I have, uh, oh wait, oh, I can refresh your remote control. Go ahead, you should be able to. All right, uh, hi, so how do I, do I have like a, oh, there we go, okay. So we know that Q, we have, the original equation is Q V B equals M V squared over R. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, because we wanna get, we wanna isolate the R, I transfer, I like shifted some things around in order to get R equals M V squared over Q V B. Mm -hmm. And so then I was just able to plug everything in. And so I ended up with, uh, let me just, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31. Oh wait. Did you simplify the expression first or? Oh yeah, I, I, well, I wasn't sure if we could. I didn't know if we were allowed to. Yes, we didn't... we're simplifying. Mm -hmm. All right, in that case, yeah, I'll just simplify now. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, oh dear, uh, yeah. Are, are you like moving yeah, I do the mouse? You did that. I think that you, cause like, I think that only one of us can move the mouse oh, at okay. once. Go ahead. All right. Negative 31. All right. And so then we end up with over here six times. Yes, I have a trackpad, so this is pretty bad, but. It's all right. It's all right. 10 to the sixth. And since we have velocity squared on top and velocity on the bottom, we can just cancel out one of the Vs, and mm -hmm. then we just have V like a normal V on top and no V on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So then, <clears throat> oh, sorry, oh that was me. Hold on, hold yes. on, I have to do this. <clears throat> Where's the mouse? And uh, oh, it's not hold on. Drawn. Do I have to change it for you? That's so weird. Yeah, I don't think no. I have the ability to change hold it. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is so weird. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I've yeah, stolen look. control of your screen. Can right. you right now? Yep, yeah. I can. So to the negative. 19th and then since we canceled out the velocity we just have 1.8 yeah and so my and so this all is equal to r <clears throat> and then my final answer was that r equals 1.9 mm -hmm. times 10 t 
to the negative fifth. meters okay uh, okay yes good now uh, let me see uh, so who controls the, the marker right now do you control it I, I gave up control so it's yours I control it okay yeah. okay that is so interesting I'm gonna move something around here So I'm gonna move this to the left here. Okay, um, let's see, negative 31 plus six will be 25, uh, right? 25, and here we have 19, we should expect getting negative six, and with this nine and six, we'll get negative five. So that's the order of the magnitude. Uh, how many got this value, if you can, Put in the chat box, yes, no. All right. Okay. All right, very good. So now, uh, Anthony, you have your hand up. Do you want to put the work, not the work, probably the answer, because it will be the same work for number two. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this, this is number one. Uh, so Anthony, go ahead. <coughs> Can you write? Uh, let me see. Um, I don't think so. Do you have to like request? At the top, it says view options, and then you got to click on request remote control. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Go ahead. You have a marker, or if you want, you can. I can switch it to the. Uh, text. Yeah, you can write. Okay, so you just want me to write the answer, right? Yeah. Okay. And then, so two would be 1.04 uh, times 10 to a negative second. Mm -hmm. meters. <clears throat> okay. Yes, okay, very good. So let's check the uh, order of the magnitude. So we have charge will be, uh, the mass rather will be 1.6, negative 27, 27 and um, seven, which will give us the 20, 27 and seven, negative 20 and negative 19 will give us negative one, and then divided by 10 will be negative two, yes. The order of magnitude is correct. Okay, uh, if you're gonna uh, confirm if you got the same value for number two. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm gonna take over the controls. Next, number three, if someone wants to volunteer to put the answer for that one, number three. Uh, Nicole, go ahead. And Emily goes for number four then. So you need to request the control, Nicole. Okay, let me change the marker. I'm gonna change the color. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, I still control the marker. Hey, wait up, let me change the color. There you go. Nicole, go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, very good. Uh, again, if you can confirm, you get the uh, same answer. Okay. All right, very good. Um, Emily, can you go on to number four? Again, you have to request to control the thingy. Go ahead. You can undo it. There's an undo button if you don't like the quality of what you're writing. At the bottom, there's an undo. How do I undo myself? Uh, oh, you can't? Really? Okay. No, I can't. Oh. Um, is it? Okay, if I type I, it. I did that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Do you still have control? Yes, you do. Yeah, I think. Actually, yeah. no. Mm -hmm. It's 8.98, right? That's what you're trying to write? Yeah. Okay. 8.98 yeah. 8 times 10 to the negative 4 meters. Okay, just, just try it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Mm hmm Okay, you got it. All right, so um, again, if you can confirm you got this value. I'm gonna turn off my video. Okay, so very good. So these quantities are manageable, meaning that they're not too microscopic, like 10 to negative five seems to be a little too small. And the reason for that is um, it's an electron. So if you're using a regular small size um, uh, cloud chamber, you have to have magnifying capabilities to look at the track of those particles. Uh, now let's go with the, uh, the five and six, right? So in five and six, I'm gonna try to sketch it real quick. So number five, we have this diagram where you have uh, a magnet. Let me just move this over here. So like this, right? This is north. And there was another one in the south. Something like this. So, and we have a positively charged particle, right? Positively charged particle flying in to the field. Okay, can someone um, volunteer to, Megan, you have your hand up? Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, what I did is I drew the magnetic field V uh, and that's just vectors between north and south. Right. Uh, yes, go ahead. You can use the marker now. Okay. Wait. So field lines go from north to south. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Um, so this is just B, and then you can use the right hand rule to figure out where the force is coming out. Mm -hmm. Ah, sorry. sorry. So, um, yeah, four fingers of your right hand are facing where B is, and then mm -hmm. your thumb is facing the vector uh, V, and then your palm is facing out of the page. Out of the page, right? So the way I would, so let me uh, take over this thing. So the way would I would I would demonstrate this is that uh, let me see camera on. So instead of like following this rigid uh, picture, we can turn the magnets around a little bit, right? 
So now we have like, in my perspective, north on my left and south on the right, right? So as a result, we can actually point four fingers to the left. So like, like, like that, right? And um, then the thumb now in this case points out of the page. Do you guys see what I'm showing? Yeah, my hands didn't turn. Like that, yes? Hello? Are you here? Okay, so then the force will come out of the palm and it should relate to the plane of the paper, which means which way would the force be going? It's going out of the page. Uh, again, you have to try to simplify the picture. So we have a magnetic field going this way, right? Particle is coming out of the page. So this is gonna be dot for the velocity. So if you arrange it like this, which way will the force be? You can type in your answers right. in, the, in the chat room, in the chat box. Up, up the page, right? So it's gonna be up the page. Megan, you got it? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Um, I have a question. The, yes. The velocity doesn't look like it's doing that to me. I know because we're looking, uh, it's a perspective, right? Perspective. So when you look at the perspective, um, the lines, like, uh, you guys heard about uh, perspective, I'm, I'm sure, right? In arts class? Yeah. Oh, is it like you're looking at the front face? Okay, I'm not, I'm not confused. Then. You understand? So, like, if we have, like, a street going like this, and then going like this, and then these are the buildings, right? Someone's walking here. Uh, then, what do you say? They're walking along the street, right? Something like that. Yeah. So... If, it, if you're actually standing here, then you'll say the person is walking towards you from your perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that means if I, if I draw a flat picture, uh, then this flat, flat picture will look, will look like this. This is, a, this is a flat picture. Make sense? So even if it's drawn in perspective, you should still think of uh, the forces, I mean, the, the vectors in relation to the plane of the paper. Make sense? Mm -hmm. I hope it does. Wait, in the original one, isn't it still going, like, would you write out of the page as the answer? Because uh, like, you move for it the back. Force? Yeah, yeah. No, force will be going up the page. Particle is basically coming out of the page. Particle is moving out of the page. Oh, okay. You see that? That's why I drew like this, this flat image in the middle, kind of show that you're looking at the slice of the three-dimensional world. Yeah, okay. Okay. How many of you have watched the, uh, there was a cartoon, Flatland? If you never watched it, watch this really cool cartoon. Uh, it gives you kind of, it's funny to say, different perspective and how, how things are uh, envisioned in two-dimensional world, like things exist in two-dimensional world and how they cannot see, comprehend the third, three, the third dimension. So if you have time, if you have like, I think it's on YouTube somewhere, you, can, you should be able to find it. It's a really cool movie. So look it up. Um, so what we have to be able to do is to look at three-dimensional world and look, that's what we actually do all the time. We look at the slices, two-dimensional slices of the three-dimensional world, okay? All right, so now we're gonna have the next one. Let me just remove this. So number six, right? 
Number six. Any volunteer to explain that one? I'm going to try to sketch it real quick. Number six. Give me the marker. So in number six, we have something like this. So this is north, right? And the negatively charged particle is rushing like so. That's the velocity. Um, so let's see, who should I call? Uh, maybe Daniel, you gonna try? Daniel? Are you there? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. can you hear me? Yes. I wasn't like 100% sure how to do this. I kind of thought like the field lines were coming like out of the north block, like to the right, kind of. Um, so you can you can draw this, uh, you have control over the marker. So like, wait, ah, there mm -hmm. So like that, Kind of away from north, right? Yes, uh -huh. yeah. Um, and Just so, since we're doing, wall, maybe. yeah, sure, mm -hmm. right? So, it's a very good point. So, we don't really care. I mean, we, we make an assumption that the uh, south must be somewhere uh, opposite to north, so we can always draw a few lines coming out of no north, and then they will eventually get to the south. All right, very good. Go on. Okay, so I think the way that I did on my paper is kind of wrong, but if you imagine it the way that you did it just now, um, such as like the velocity is coming out of the page, so then that would mean mm -hmm. B is going to the right. Mm -hmm. Right. And since it's a negative particle, you'd use the left-hand rule. So mm -hmm. that means you're... Um, Thumb is pointing like um, out of the page, and then your four fingers are pointing to the right. So that would mean force is going down. The force will right? be down, right? Yeah. Yes. Excellent. I, the images are kind of overlapping, but yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Very good. Does everybody understand this? Any questions about this? Uh, how do you know which way the magnetic field lines are going? Uh, so we, we know that they should be coming out of north. Since it's a bar magnet, they yeah. should be coming out of north. And that's all we know, and we don't care where the south is. So we just oh, draw okay. them coming out. Then why can't it go the other way? Which other way? Like uh, to the left. Uh, because like if I were to draw them like different color, right? Let me see, give me a different color. So they, they should be going like this. They, they are, they're going like this mm -hmm. and then they're coming through, right? They are probably coming from somewhere over there, but your focus should be in the region, right? Where the particle is flying. Oh, okay. So if the particle is flying in the other, like on the other side of the bar magnet, would the magnetic field be going the other way? Uh, it would still be going the same direction. But again, why do you ask the question about something that is like out of the scope of this problem? You have to focus oh. on this, like within the region, we're focused on this region right here. And that's where you want to know where the field lines are going. Mm. Okay. Make sense? So uh, concentrate your attention on the region where a particle, a charged particle, is, is being affected by the field. Uh, do not make questions too general and becomes difficult to answer. What if, and then we go on and on and on. So we don't want to do that. Okay? All right, so um, if we're good, let's see how much time we have. All right, so we have about 12 minutes. Okay, so what I would like to do is, um, well, first of all, how many watch the videos I posted online on Google Classroom? If you can like, uh, so let me actually put this here, video, 
video and question mark and if you can respond after that i'll just count Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is ten people. Ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so um but uh, that's not that's not good enough. All of you should watch them, and the reason I post them is that because we will be talking about this right now. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then you're missing out a lot. Uh, that's why you have to go back and watch them again. Okay. So let's see. Um, do you think building cloud chamber at home is a good? <laughs> uh, it could be. The problem is that uh, the cloud chamber involves uh, alcohol. So we have to have a way to evaporate alcohol if they're able to maintain certain temperature will it which it will be uh, in the vapor form in the closed chamber and this vapor is like uh, we call it super cooled vapor uh, which means it's supposed to be liquid but it's not and that's a that's a tricky spot of the cloud chamber if you have mechanism to control temperature and pressure then you have like a pretty much good control of, over how to create this environment and you can turn on and off at will. And that's how actual cloud chamber works. It's very, uh, uh, what's it called, fluid in terms of like you can quickly turn on and off and uh, it's much easier to set up than there's another chamber which is like, uh, which is called bubble chamber, uh, which is much more sophisticated and much more expensive, but it's also, it's also giving you much better uh, view of, of how particles are moving okay so um let me see what i can do here so i'm gonna do something that uh, i don't usually do and that's unfortunately i have to do this because people don't pay attention so uh, let me see where are you Okay, so if you're present, you should be able to do this real quick. If you're absent, you won't be able to do that. So, to everyone, this is what I'm asking you to do real quick. One, two, three. Can you click on it and then open the form, fill it out real quick? I'm going to close it in one minute. If you click on the link, it should open the uh, you should open the the form. Do you, can you guys see this? So we have 29 people in the room. I should ex I should expect 29 responses. And I'm going to close it in about 30 seconds.
Okay, I'm closing it. If you're not done, if you're absent, that means you're absent. I'm closing the quiz. How do I close this quiz? We're just closing. That's it. It's accepting no more answers. Okay, so uh, this quiz is not uh, graded per se. It's just for me to see who is present. Unfortunately, I have to do this because some people are not present physically at their computers. Okay, so moving forward, uh, let's go on to this screen, white screen. I'm going to go on to the next slide. And um, the cloud chamber, I'm going to just explain quickly how the cloud chamber works. And I wanted also to go over the bubble chamber. So cloud chamber, cloud, cloud, how do we spell cloud? Cloud chamber. Uh, works in the following way. You basically have a super cool, cooled cloud. So super cooled cloud. Super cooled means that uh, substance at this temperature should not be in vapor form. It should be in liquid form. Super cooled cloud. Now uh, with alcohol, it's pretty easy to uh, super cooled cloud or gas. It's easy to do that with water. It's a little bit more challenging, uh, and they usually people use alcohol because it's easy to manipulate. So what happens is when the particle enters this cloud, it will experience resistance, meaning that it's going to collide with the particles of the vapor, right? And it uh, basically ionizes them, and these little ions then become. Um, centers of coalescence, meaning that little tiny uh, droplets will start being attracted to each other, little tiny molecules will attract each other, and they form uh, basically little clouds, uh, just uh, like similar to a uh, trail of an airplane, like an airplane traveling really high up, it will leave a cloud of um, uh, vapor, uh, not vapor, but like liquid, so basically we have cloud, which is gas, right, gas, and the gas then turns into liquid, which we then can see using a bright light. You can see tiny cloud tracks um, following a particle. If you put this into the strong magnetic field, then particles will, if they have charged, they will undergo like spiral motion, right? And once you're done with this, you can, wipe it off and start over. So it's pretty easy to turn it on and off, right? And reset it. And uh, it's relatively small in size, pretty uh, low, low cost. The problem with the cloud chamber is that the cloud or the gas is very low density. And if particles are going really fast, they will just streak right through and then you won't see much. You won't be able to like tell if the particle is curving, uh, how much the curvature is and so forth. Uh, by the way, the, in the homework, when you were looking for the R, you were looking for the uh, curvature of the particles. The particles moving like this, right? If you have at least part of the curve visible, then you should be able to see to to find out the radius of the curvature, right? And from there, you should be able to find so-called charge mass ratio. This is called charge mass ratio, and it's a unique. Uh, charge mass ratio. It's a unique uh, number for like elementary particles, excuse me, ions, uh, electron, proton, and so forth. So if you have that, you can identify particles almost 100%. Uh, there are some charge mass ratio which are really close to each other, but again, if you do careful measurements, you should be able to tell particles apart. Any questions about the cloud chamber? No question about cloud chamber. Okay, so then let me move this thing to the right, to the left. Like that. So now we have another uh, much more sophisticated machine, which is called bubble chamber.
bubble chamber is much more sophisticated because um, uh, with this you want to try to capture particles which are moving really fast, like uh, we call them uh, cosmic rays, for example. Cosmic rays, uh, which which move with near speed of light. And if you don't have a way to slow them down, then you won't be able to get any information about them. So in bubble chamber, basically what you have is, um, let me see if I can draw that. Basically you have a chamber which looks more or less like a sphere. It holds uh, liquid and it could be water. I'm not 100% sure, probably it is water. And what's gonna happen is that uh, this water will be actually um, not super cool, what's the other word? Super hot. So uh, temperature of the water will be above boiling point actually. Boiling point. So if boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, this, this water will be a temperature, let's say 103 degrees Celsius. If the water is not pure, that water is supposed to boil at the uh, standard temperature and pressure, uh, I mean standard pressure, atmospheric pressure, but uh, this water is specially purified, no ions, no dust particles, no contamination. So it's really pure water. And uh, you can bring its temperature above its boiling. And as long as there are no centers for bubbling, for bubbles to form, and thus the water to evaporate within the volume, you have a, a super um, overheated water and um, it will not boil basically, will not form any uh, bubbles. Now, as soon as a particle enters, right? Uh, and usually particles in this case will not enter from everywhere. Usually uh, this uh, chamber is surrounded by a really thick uh, layer of metal and you actually let the uh, charged particles to come in you know, from certain directions. So they made a little opening here and the particles are allowed to come in from here. So, so because the water is roughly a thousand times more dense than vapor, right? So you have much higher resistance for the particles. So they will slow down significantly. Uh, now this chamber is usually a much larger size than cloud chamber and uh, it will uh, require much strong magnetic field to be able to penetrate through this thick volume. And um, uh, if you have those conditions, then you basically can uh, observe a lot more particle activity. Uh, you can take pictures. Uh, the chamber will be dark. You shine the bright light and you see bubbles, right? Following the particles. And then you can analyze the pictures. Today it's done a bit differently. Bubble chambers are probably not in use uh, very much. Let me see the time. And we're out of time, excuse me. So I'm gonna post this on uh, YouTube, but also I'm gonna post a few more uh, videos to watch and there'll be one more worksheet for homework. Uh, it will be mostly at, uh, with 3D images, okay? Of uh, right-hand rule. You have to use right-hand rule to solve those problems. Any questions? So I suppose there are no questions. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, make sure you check your Google Classroom for the homework. See ya.